tempest may sweep all the white stormy sea. In Jesus, I'm safe evermore. In Jesus, my soul in a heaven of rest, I sail the white sea. shall continue our devotional service by singing from CGS in number 159, 159. We appreciate the prelude that we have had prior to that duet. We had the choir that gave us looking for our city and then a lovely violin duet to start our devotional service for this morning. We want to appreciate the choir and orchestra for that. I would like to heartily welcome everyone to the house of the Lord this lovely Lord's Day. May the Lord bless you for coming. Amen. And for our internet audience, wherever you are, that you are enjoying this service with us, we pray that the Lord, who is with us here, will be with you wherever you are, Amen. and we bless you as well. Amen. But just in case we have some people that are looking at us now on their website, on our website, and uh, wondering where we are. This is the Apostolic Faith Church, the Bexley Branch, located on number 13, Penn Hill Road, DA53EP. We just, um, at the beginning of our devotional service for today, just in case you live locally or visiting and you'd like to be part of the service um, physically, you are very welcome. Um, you will still meet us um, with the service going on, but if you're unable to do that, you can as well just keep enjoying the service with us wherever you are, as we believe that the Lord is everywhere to bless everyone whose heart is tuned to him. So let's take him number 159 to begin with. Master, speak. Thy servant hear it. Speak to me by name, O oh Master. Let me know it is to me. It is the prayer of my heart that today we are not going to see the teacher or the choir or the preacher, but we all concentrate on God whom we have come to meet, and he will speak to our heart. Amen. We have Brad Mike to come forward and lead us. Beginning with this first one, we are taking verses 1, 2, and 4, and a couple of more other songs. Brad Mike, please. <laughs> to speak.
Amen. We take verses one and three. the chorus and take number 63. In the chorus of the CGS, CGS chorus is number 63. Jesus never fails. Amen. And Jesus will not fail in our life. Amen. Jesus never fail. He will not fail in your life. Amen. Jesus never fail, never, never fail. Some before prayer is going to be number 93, CGS 93. CGS 93. We want to sing it over and over again. The word of God is wonderful. And may it be wonderful in our life today because the word of God will set us free. We'll take the first and the last verse standing. All the two verses, first and the last, we'll take it standing. And after which we shall remain standing to be led in prayer. Sing them over again. Let the orchestra introduce this to us. Shall we say?
And as we remain standing with our eyes closed, we call on Brad Lloyd to come forward and lead us in congregational prayer. God the Father, of God the Son, of God the Holy Ghost, Lord, we are gathered here in thy holy house to worship thee, to hear from thee. Speak, Master. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our situation. Speak to our needs. Speak to our difficult areas in our life. Deliver us, Lord. We are listening, Lord. All to the beautiful words the words of love, because we believe that there is life in thy word, because there is a life in thy word, Lord, come down and deliver us. Remember each and individual of us, Lord, everyone that have come to this house, Lord, to hear from thee. Visit us, Lord. Give us a testimony that we might say that indeed we serve a living God. Come down, Lord, and bless the preacher this morning. Remember all those who are sick this morning. Visit them, Lord. Give them a testimony. Even right now, Lord, oh, deliver them from the sickness, Lord. Jesus, we present all to thee. Come and take total control. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
for our Bible reading this morning. We'll be looking into the book of Samuel, chapter 3, verses 7 to 10. First Samuel, chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. One more time, um, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. 9. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be. If he call thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 10, the last verse. And the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant hear it.
By the grace of God, we shall make it all the way. Amen. I'd like to read from the book of Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. We shall make it all the way. The um, world of um, advertisement is a big business. Mm -hmm. Reflecting on my previous job as a lecturer and teaching a marketing module, I remember one of the important aspects of marketing course is advertisement. And the main purpose of that module is mainly <coughs> to let people know that it's one thing to get your product right. It's another thing to have everything intact and ready to go. And it's yet another thing to make people to be aware mm -hmm. of that product. Mm -hmm. So we teach that it is important that you must get people's attention. And that is what advertisement is all about. If you're able to get people's undivided attention, if you're able to get people focused, you will get to their mind. You will get to their soul. Perhaps it's no wonder then that some people, as a result of advert, they end up buying things that they did not plan to buy before. Because the, the advert is so glamorous, it's so nice, it's so wonderful that your attention is uh, uh, directed and before you know it, you've paid for something that you wonder why did you pay in the first place anyway. And that is the main essence of advert, to get people's undivided attention. That happened to me while in Takura, the city center. I saw one advert far away from where I was standing, and I cannot remember exactly all the wordings of that advert, but I remember myself walking away from where I was standing I wanted to get closer to that advert in order to understand clearly what it's all trying to say. It got my attention. And as I was reflecting on this, I believe that God also has means of getting our attention. And it is the prayer of my heart this morning that God will get your attention. Amen. It's one thing to come to the church. It's one thing to preach. It's one thing to teach. It's one thing to even make contributions or be a teacher. It's another thing to be sure that you allow God to get your attention. And this morning, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage myself that perhaps we should cool down. You know many times when people are just doing too many things and here and there and everything here and there, you, 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 you lose focus. And my advice today is that perhaps we should just cool down and say, God, I want to give you my attention. Some people are busy on legitimate things, and that is true. We are to be busy with our secular job, our family, even taking care of our body, as well as doing God's work. But somebody has said that some people, they are too busy doing God's work that they forget the God of the work. They forget to listen. They forget to give God the attention. So which one is important? We want to give God our attention. For example, when last really did you say, God, today, what are you telling me? Even as we have come into the house of God, when we go down on our knees, is it not just talking and talking and talking? When last did you actually say, God, now is your turn? 
speak to me. I'm giving you now my undivided attention. And it is the prayer of my heart today that God will help you, Amen. God will help me Amen. to give him our undivided attention. Amen. He has a way of getting it anyway. He will get it. He will find a way to be sure that he gives us that opportunity to turn to him. We want to cool down today. If we are not very careful, we may in the end hear, after we have said to the Lord and we told that, as uh, Brother Banji did for us a few weeks ago, about that man who told that I've done everything. Oh, I'm now ready for my reward. I'm now ready to go in. And then we find ourselves wanting. Just like as Jesus Christ warned us about some people that would say to Jesus on that day, I have preached. I have been singing. I have been teaching. I have been cleaning. I have been doing every work. I have been doing ushering. And God will turn to them and say, I don't know you. Perhaps one thing that may be responsible for that was that as you are doing all those things, because they are important things to do, God was trying to say, give me your attention. I need to speak to you. And instead of us giving God that attention, we were so busy. And in the end, when we hear such a thing, it is my prayer that for you and for me, in Jesus' name, Amen. that will not be our lot. Amen. Because today, we're going to give him our attention. God may be saying to us, when I was pointing to certain areas of your life, did you listen to me? When I was telling you that you need to confess that sins, did you? When I was telling you that you need to make that restitution, did you? When I was telling you that you need to uh, uh, return to the call that I've given you, not the one that you made up for yourself. Did you listen? You are rationalizing everything. You are giving excuses for everything. You did not listen to me. We wouldn't want to hear that from God in the end. And that is why today I want to encourage you that let us cool down. Let us give God our attention. We don't want to hear in the end, you didn't give me your attention. Just as we have in front of us. This man called Moses, he turned aside. Moses turned aside when God got his attention. Moses, as we all know for some time now, was um, God actually made Moses to be a great leader right from the beginning, before he was born. But because of some mistakes in his life, he has to be in a state where instead of being a great leader that the Lord meant him to be, he became someone leading the ship. And it is possible that we have some people here today or listening to me that God meant that you should be a great leader. God meant that he has a wonderful call for your life. But because you failed to give him your attention, you have just been looking after the sheep. When God wants you to be in another type of uh, 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 calling that he has for your life. And I thank God today that the secret of the devil has come to light. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. he's going to release you today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It's good for us to really know where we are. When we don't know where we are, we are driven right and left and center. We don't even know what we believe. But when we know that this is God's calling upon my life, I have given him my attention, he has spoken to me, and I know I am doing his bidding, let the whole world continue to fall down left, right, and center. The Lord will see you through. Amen. Moses got this message. God knew what would melt the heart of Moses. He had been in this situation of looking after the sheep for about 40 years. Perhaps, the Bible didn't say so, but perhaps the Lord has been talking to him before that time, Egypt is where I want you. My children... That is why you are born, to deliver my children. This thing that you are doing here, you are just wasting your time. 
The Bible didn't say that, but perhaps that has been going on until this very day. When God knew what would make him to turn aside from the normal routine. Perhaps before, he would take the sheep. I have never been a shepherd before. I don't know how they do it, but I was just thinking. We gather the sheep, take them to the, um, for grazing or for um, drinking. And the normal routine, he was doing that. And God appeared. God will appear to you today. Yeah. Miraculously. Yeah. To get your attention. Amen. To get my attention. Yeah. Many times it does take that miraculous appearance of God. And he knows how he's going to do that. So on this wonderful day, God decided, okay, now, this is what I'm going to do to this man. It's time for you to listen to me. I need to get your attention. And then God now appeared made the bush to be burning, but not consuming. And verse 3 tells us, and Moses said, I will now turn aside. Hallelujah. Amen. May we turn aside today Amen. from our normal routine, our mentality, our attitude, our reasoning, the way we've, we've been thinking it has to be this and that way. May we just turn aside. Amen. Just give it a try and see what God will do. I will now turn aside in verse 3 and see this great sight. I don't know what God is going to show you that we consider to be a great sight that will make you to say you want to turn aside. Why the bush is not burnt? This is, this is something extraordinary. Perhaps I've seen fire burning bush before and everything consumed burnt down, but this one is something special. I will turn aside. I want to see what is going on. And from there, verse 4, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. Are you with me? Yeah. When the Lord saw. Maybe perhaps it looks to me like it wasn't like I'm still doing my normal routine and God will be talking. I'm listening, God, but this ship is going away. I'm listening, God, but I need to take them to that water. Mm -mm. I want your undivided attention. Leave the ship alone now and face me. That's what verse 4 is trying to say. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. May God get you and I to that level. Amen. Where we will say, Here am I, O Lord. Amen. Have mercy upon my soul. Amen. What are you saying? Speak to me. I'm ready to listen to you. We know how this story ended. You know, God knew that if Moses was not really cornered up like this, God, I want to believe in reading the account that followed, it would be like as if it would be very difficult for Moses to understand what God is trying to say. Because from there on, you will see the argument between Moses and God. Even after that miraculous appearance, I want you to do this. What, what are you talking about? He has forgotten the appearance, the miraculous thing already. He's like, what are you trying to tell me? To go, go where? I killed somebody there. I left the place. I, I ran away. To go where? Who am I? A lot of excuses followed. Who am I? Uh, what, is, what is your name? Who, who is this even now talking to me? What is your name? You want me to go and do this? But we know as Bible students that eventually Moses listened. Moses submitted. Moses had God. Because God got his undivided attention. When we give God our undivided attention, God will speak. And it will not be too difficult for us to understand that God is speaking. It is when we are too busy in our own mind, in our own ways, whichever way we have seen things, that God will be talking, but many things are beclouding our heart and our mind that we cannot understand what the Lord is saying. I believe that the Lord is present with us today. I believe that the Lord is in his house today. And he wants to direct us. He wants to get our attention. And we, we pray that God will help us to see that great sight. And that is what our services are all about. They are great sight. Amen. 
When we come into the house of God, let us see our services like that. God wants to get our attention. If we apply our heart to everything going on, not focusing on anyone, but this is the house of God. I'm here to meet God. God will speak to you. Amen. You will hear God. Amen. Whether they are singing together, your heart is in that singing, not just talking. Not just singing out loud unnecessarily. You are singing the words of the song from your heart. God will let you know this is for you. The Bible reading is going on. The choir, uh, uh, they, 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 they come together to sing. Your heart is just, what do you have in this for me, Lord? What are you telling me, Lord? What do you want me to get from this, Lord? Anyone who has a heart like that will not leave the service empty. Mm -hmm. I trust God. Amen. But when you are, oh, you are in a service and your mind is there singing, the people will see you singing, oh yes, Jesus loves, just, just words coming out. It's not getting to your heart. But today, as I said, I want to believe that the Lord has revealed to us the secret of the enemy. And he has no grip, no power, by the grace of God, over any of us again. In Jesus' name, God has something special for everyone. But it may be different. What God has for me may be different from what God has for you. We have people seated here today that they are in need of genuine experience of salvation. Listen to me carefully. I am not talking of an experience that has nothing to show for it. I'm talking about genuine experience, the one that the Bible talks about. A born again, a turn around experience. And God has been telling you, you are not saved. I pray God will get your attention today. And you will submit to God. God, God you are right. I'm wrong. I am not saved. And I know you want to save me today. Amen. Have mercy upon my soul. Amen. You are not sanctified. You don't have Holy Ghost baptism. It's very clear. It's very glaring. It's just because you cannot give God the attention to let him speak to you. So you just, just like, oh, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, I have all this. I have all cool down, brother. Cool down, sister. Say today, God, what are you saying to me? Because in the final analysis, it's going to be you and God in the end. In the final analysis, when you draw that last breath, it's going to be the reality. So if I know that the reality is coming, shouldn't I do something about that? Will I not be a, a, a fool? They say a fool at 40. I'm now over 60. I don't want to be a fool. May God help us. Amen. God is saying to some people, come back. I want you to make consecration. I want you to refocus. I have a calling for your life. For Moses, it was a spectacular and extraordinary scene. It was a great sight. He drew near. He turned aside. And then God spoke to him, and he did what God wanted him to do. But as I said, some people are just like Moses. They are busy. They are just too busy doing things that is not, things that God had not meant for their life. And it's just because they won't listen to God. Moses' attention was drawn to God. You know, from that day on, when God got Moses' attention, his life was never the same again. That's what happens. When we give God our attention, our life will not be the same again. Because we are not going to be doing our own things. We are going to be doing God things. Mm -hmm. And people will see. Yeah. God will make people to see. Yeah. It will be very clear to people mm -hmm. by God's grace. Of course, people, not all, everyone will see. But those that will see, they will see that this is truly of God. I, pr I pray once more that God will get your attention. Yeah. Because God is still in that business of getting people's attention. As we see... Uh, uh, some people, uh, you just be hearing a uh, uh, choir singing, you see tears rolling down the cheeks of some people. What is that? God is getting their attention. 
Some people just reading the Bible or just even the congregation singing because they focus their heart, their mind, and everything in that. God was getting their attention. And you see how people grow and people changing from one uh, a level of immaturity to being mature. God is getting their attention. Now some people might say, I don't know how and when. And that's why we have that as our text in the book of Samuel. When God called Samuel, he was a child. He didn't know the word of God. He didn't know that God was calling. But he was sincere. What God is asking you and I to do is just to be sincere. Don't worry about the way he's going to call you. Don't worry about whether you will understand his language or not. But let God see the honesty and the sincerity of your heart. As he saw that of Samuel. He actually called Samuel three times. Because God will have, perhaps, after first and second is enough. You, you don't get, you don't hear me. But because God knows that this poor boy, he was innocent. He just didn't know. Didn't God then intervene in a spectacular way? The one that could not hear God again was the one that now told him, God is the one talking to you. Eli had to make him realize that God is the one talking to you. So when next God, you hear that, your name, because I'm not the one talking to you, say, speak for thy servant hearing. May we get to that level today. Amen. Where we will say, speak. Amen. That simply means we get ourselves to a place of surrender. Amen. If we don't surrender to God, we will be wasting our time. We'll be wasting our energy. We'll be wasting our resources. And if we are not careful, we may waste our life. May we not waste our life. Amen. May we surrender to God. Amen. When we are attentive, as he helped Samuel, he's going to help us. Amen. You know, Samuel was so attentive, even though he didn't know the voice of God. He was so humble. He, he didn't compromise. He was in a home where there were a lot of confusion, in a home where the father has lost the grip of everything about that home, a home where the children have gone their own way. A young man, a young person, he was more or less on his own. That's how to get God's attention. Because he was so concentrating on God that whatever Ophni and Amphenius they were doing doesn't concern me. That is their own. I don't want to have anything to do. That's their own. They were all living together yeah. when those people are committing atrocities in the house of God. Some people will say, don't you see A and B doing this? As I usually say, my name is not the name of those people. I have a name that is written in the book of life. It's different from the name of that one we call brother that or sister that. Let her be doing whatever she's doing. Let him be doing whatever he is doing. My name is Isaac Hardigan. And I believe God has that right name for me in heaven. So God is not going to judge me with those people. Samuel was listening to God. May you listen to God. Amen. What we now have me to do is what we want God to help us to get to. That was the kind of thing that um, Saul, some people thought that they are tough. Tough? Tough? When God will be dealing with you right. to soften you because he loves you, because he wants you to get to heaven, I want to pray you will do the kind of thing that Saul did. Amen. When Saul of Tarsus, that injurious persecutor, causing problem for everyone, God saw from heaven, and perhaps God was trying to get his attention all the way along, but he won't listen. He thought he was doing the right thing. Who are these people? Where are they coming from? With all that I know, why are they doing all these things that they are doing? Who has appointed them to do this? No, 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 no. I need authority. I need to bind them. We need to imprison them. We need to kill them. And God was looking from heaven. Little did he know he was fighting with God. Little did he know he was only kicking against the bricks. And God, 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 God was so merciful. And God looked down from heaven. How long will you continue to do this? As he was going, with all the power and all the energy and all the effort and all the authority backing, God knew what would catch him. 
God knew that he would need a shining light from heaven that will surround him, that he will not be able to move again. He will become blind. We don't want to get to that level before we listen to God. We want to listen now. We want to surrender now. We want to say, Lord, now I want you to have my attention. I don't know whether this is right or wrong. Someone has said that um, God, when we are comfortable, God whispers. But in our pain, he shouts. That is, you look at that, your pain as God is shouting, saying something. God is telling you something. God is telling you something. Instead of complaining, instead of looking for solace here and there, instead of fighting, turn to God. God, are you saying something? Are you trying to get my attention? Saul eventually surrendered to God and he was used mightily. We also heard of Sister Florence Crawford, the founder of our church. He was in a ballroom where he was dancing, enjoying herself. She was dancing and enjoying herself. And God from heaven knew that apostolic faith church would be established in heaven. And he knew the heart of someone that he could use. And he saw in a ballroom, in a dancing floor, a young lady dancing there. And he knew how to get her attention. And from heaven, in her own testimony, she said she heard God spoke to her, daughter, give me thy heart. He said, she said as she looked around, who is talking to me? And then she didn't see anyone, just like Samuel. She continued with her dancing. And the voice came again, daughter, give me thy heart. This is now something more than ordinary. We know from our own account that she gave her life to the Lord and apostolic faith was born. Amen. Which you and I are enjoying today. Because one lady gave her undivided attention to the Lord. May we do the same thing today. Amen. You know many times God may not use all these audible voice and signs like all this one that we have been looking at, but he knows what you will understand. He's such a merciful, pitiful, loving God. He knows what you will understand. Uh, well, again, I didn't, um, apart from being a plumber and um, having the opportunity to teach uh, some students, I don't have many experience of any other occupation. But during the course of my uh, uh, lecture again, I remember, you will enter to the lecture theater with hundreds of students. And as a lecturer, you know, the students, they are, talk, cha, 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 cha. They are talking and doing everything. And you came from the back, and I own lecture theater at the University of Wilson Banga. I go to the front, ready to give my lecture. The noise is still going on. You know what I do at times? I just go before, I may leave the podium, go there and just stand, quiet. And the student got me. They know that, they now be telling them, shh, 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 shh. They quieted themselves. God can use even silence to get our attention. Is God silent in your life? He's trying to get your attention. He doesn't just shout and bring all these signs and fire and brimstone and this one rolling. No, 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 no. He has many ways of getting people's attention. So if he's using silence for you, may God help you to understand. Amen. Some people uh, gesture, you know, some, some homes or some parents or some even husband and wife. I won't tell you the one that uh, Stella and I are using. We, we have our own, just as perhaps you have your own too. You, 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 you just want to say something, and it's just a gesture. You are getting, I'm getting Stella's attention, and at times she wants to get my attention too. She knows what she's using, and I can get it. People in the environment may not know that she's talking to me, but I will know she's telling me something. She will know I'm telling her something. Gesture. If God is using a gesture for you, and he has a way of doing that, and he will let you understand that he's the one doing that, others may not, don't worry about others. You may be doing something, but others are not. What concerns you about other people? 
Do we really realize that that is the trick of the enemy to, to, to make us do things that God has not meant for us to do? May we, God, may we get God's gesture. Amen. Some people, it's just a question of clearing their throat. <clears> throat. That's enough. The person you are talking to, they know that. Some of us who, perhaps, some parents here will do that, but I remember growing up in Nigeria, you, you are with your parents, just a look like this. You know what that means. Is God looking at you now? Are you getting it? Do, do, do you have that undivided attention to know that, ah, 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 the way God is looking at me now. God, what are you saying? What are you saying? Uh, I must admit, my, my, at times I want to do something secretly when I'm giving my gesture or my look, and my wife will give me away by saying, what are you saying in front of everybody? <laughs> and by saying that, then you know what I do? I, I just turn away. <laughs> because I don't want to say something that I want everybody to hear. Are you doing that to God? When God is focusing on you, you are the one I'm focusing on, not all these people. Just drop down on your knees. God, what are you telling me? Let everybody be saying you are mad. Mm. I am mad. Leave me with God. Mm. When you want your own attention too, you will understand what I'm going through. Mm. May God help us. Amen. God has many ways. He uses still small voice as like the one he used for Elijah. He whispers. He, he may shout. In fact, even the circumstances of your life right now. Are you a, a child of God? and you are going through some things right now, that situation as hopeless, as frightening as it may be, may be the voice of God. It may be to get your attention. I have been through that. I've been in some terrible pain that I have to then be so quiet. The pain will stay be there, and I'll be saying, God, are you telling me something? Are you saying something to me? God can talk to us in our pain. And some people may find that hard to believe that God may use things like that. He may even use it to draw your attention to your need of repentance. He may use it to get you to the level where he wants to say you are not consecrated enough. All these things that you are doing is not what I meant for you to be doing. I want you for a bigger thing. I need you for something bigger. And you are fighting for something mediocre. How long will you continue to fight? After all, in the end, it's a lost battle anyway. If it gets you nowhere, may we listen to God in our circumstances of life, in our situation. May we not complain. Some people, they will look for self-pity. Some people, they will want everyone to know that, oh, this is happening to me, when you should face God. Try God today and see what happens. You just give God that chance. Say, God, I want to try you. Enough of me thinking of this and thinking of that. Perhaps you are the one talking to me. I will not be accusing people. I will not be fighting anybody. I will turn to you. You can use this my situation to bring something wonderful out of it. God did that for Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Simple instruction. It was at a time when he was giving God his undivided attention. He heard God. Now he decided, I'm not going to listen to God. I heard you, God. I'm not going to listen. I will go to Tashish. And God was looking at him. Okay, keep going. And he entered. He found the money to pay to go to where God did not want him to go. May God deliver us from leaking pockets. Amen. Spending on things that God has not meant us to be spending on. Spend that money. Got into that uh, uh, boat or ship. And what did he do? So that I cannot hear God again. Went to the inner part of that ship to sleep. After all, when I sleep, I don't want to be hearing him again. That voice is disturbing me. I'm going to touch it. He wants me to go to the Navy. I need to sleep. And God was following him. May God follow you. Amen. And then God brought a great storm. He knew. Because when other sailors met with him eventually, we are all praying. Can't you pray? 
You know what he said? It is because of me. He confessed. He knew God is after me. You know God is after you. At that point, if Jonah has repented, at that point, if Jonah has told those people that this is about me, instead of saying, throw me into the sea, he said, all oh, this is your prayer you are praying. Join me. I want to cry to God now. Have mercy upon me. I will now go to Nineveh. I will listen to you. I will do your bidding. I have now, I now got your attention. He didn't do that. He said, Just throw me into the sea. But our God is a loving father. He was thrown into the sea. And there, God, who knew what you would do, what I would do, has prepared a fish big enough with the teeth made in, in a special way enough not to crush Jonah. A special fish prepared by God to swallow without breaking a bone of Jonah. And it was there three days, three nights. Then I got you now. I need to give you my attention now. But, you know, as encouraging as that is, that may not be the lot of everyone. As encouraging as that is, it is possible that by the time the fish is swallowing you, your leg is cut, your head is uh, mashed together. And when you are inside the fish belly, you can imagine the way he described that in the book of Jonah. He, he described everything like weeds all around me and everything for three days and three nights. May God get your attention. May God get my attention. Amen. May we not provoke God Amen. to the level that, you know, if God didn't ask that fish to vomit him out, mm. rotten there, died there, finished there, you will not finish there. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Enough. His three days and three nights are over. Amen. When he repented inside the fish belly, and now God said, go to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. You know what he did? Immediately, without any further argument, God knows how he will get you and I to that step where people will even be surprised when they see, see you or they see me. Ah, are you not the same person? Ah, 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 you don't want to see what I've seen. You don't want to go through what I've gone through. So if God is asking for your attention, give him that attention now. God of Jonah, he will be my God. Amen. He will be your God. Amen. When I was doing my research studies, I remember my supervisor told me, in order to remain focused, you know the title of your thesis? Put it in front of your computer. So as you are thinking, uh, making things up for your chapters and all your uh, um, things that you want to write, you are not deviating from the research topic that you are focusing on. Can we make attempt to have God and heaven as a sticker that every time we'll be focusing on? But when we focus on that all the time, I thank God I passed my PhD in the end. By God's grace, I did not deviate. I, every time something will come to your mind to write about this, to go this year, you remember my topic. Is, that's not my topic. My topic is this. this topic will be coming to my mind. This area will be coming to my mind. It doesn't relate to my topic. This is my topic. We have a topic. Yeah. Our topic is heaven. Yeah. Our topic is God. Yeah. Our topic is genuine Christian experiences. Yeah. Let us focus on that and nothing more. And let's see what God will do. We are going to pass in the end. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And if you have missed the way today, you can find the way back. Amen. God wants to encourage you. Amen. God wants to help you. Amen. God wants to get your undivided attention. But if you say, I don't want to give him, he will not force you. But I have prayed, and I'm still praying, Amen. that today, in the name of Jesus, Amen. those of us that God is saying, your priority, you have missed it. You need to get it right today. May we all listen. Amen. Those that the Lord is telling us that, no, 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 you're calling, you have missed it. You may be singing, you may be preaching, you may be teaching, you may be ushering, whatever, but you are not where I want you to be. You are not where I want you to be. And I'm talking of something deeper than what people can see. We are talking something spiritual here. 
which you and God can understand. I pray that when God says that to you, you will give him your attention. Amen. And finally, the final attention getter that God is going to use, unless you get God's attention now, unless God gets your attention now, the final one, you may miss it. And that is going to be a blast of the trumpet. If it shouts from the mid-air, pa pa ra, pa 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 I don't know how it will sound. But it was to get people's attention. And that was going to be a special one. A special one that even the dead will listen. The dead. That will get the attention of the dead. Dead that are rotten. That their bones and their everything is gone. Their attention will be drawn with that attention getter. The trump of God that shall sound from the mid-air. They will rise first. And then... For those that are worshiping God, those that are serving God in honesty and uh, faithfulness, they too will hear it. Amen. The attention will reach them. Amen. But unless you give him your attention now, unless you let him understand you and you understand him now, that one will happen. And before you know it, it has come and gone. You have missed it. But in the name of Jesus, none of us Amen. will miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you feel like not shouting this morning or this afternoon, God, I just want to give you my, I'm sorry. I've not been giving you my undivided attention. What have you been telling me? Come to the altar. Come and tell God. God, today I want to give you my attention. Undivided. I put aside everything now. Speak to me. Change me today. Help me today. Make today my day. I don't want to wait until I get to the fish belly because I don't know what may happen there. Now that I'm comfortable, now that I can hear you, please speak. And when you speak, I will listen to you as we sing him Simply Trusting CGS 107.
Lord God Almighty. We thank you for this moment. We thank you because you have already got our attention. Lord, come and shower your blessing. The attention that will give us salvation, you have already given it to us. Now help us to listen to you. Help us, oh God, to follow your direction. Help us to focus on you so that this moment we shall be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit so that our heaven will be sure. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.